Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the light and love that is Unity of Lawrence. Welcome to those watching us from afar and welcome to all of those right here. I'm so grateful to see all of you here today. And by the way, happy Mother's Day for all the mothers Anyone who cares for their baby fur babies or their baby babies or their step babies or their whatever babies, happy Mother's Day to anyone who does mothering. Yes. I have cats that I mother. Yes. <laughs> anyway, it's, I'm grateful that you're all here. We have a nice crowd despite the fact that today's not only Mother's Day but KU graduation. So if you're wondering why the town is so crazy, that's part of it. Anyway, as you know, in unity, we begin everything with prayer. Let's take a centering breath and open to the divine in all of us and listen to this prayer. On this day, we dedicate our hearts to peace on earth. We appreciate everyone's spiritual journey and the abundant blessings bestowed upon us in unity with all who seek to express freedom, joy, and transformation, we welcome our divine inheritance as creators. In harmony with this truth, we live to the best of our ability with a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. And so it is. Amen. Our prayer chaplains are trained to hold sacred space and pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. If there's anything in your heart to be held in prayer, we invite you to see a chaplain following today's service at the front of the sanctuary. And who are our chaplains today? Uh huh. <laughs> so our short chaplains will be right over here and right over there. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! You know what? Let's all stand and join Holly in singing, "Mother, I feel you." All right, good morning. Mother, I feel you under my feet. Mother, I hear your heart beat. Mother, I feel you under my feet. Mother, I hear your heart beat. Way hey 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 ho. 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 Mother, I hear you in the river song, eternal waters flowing on and on. Mother, I hear you in the river song, eternal waters flowing on and on. Hey, 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 ho. 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 And now let's greet each other. Thank you. 
Mother, I feel you under my feet. Mother, I hear your heart beat. Mother, I feel you under my feet. Mother, I hear your heart beat. Hey, 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 ho. Hey, 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 ho. Hey, 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 ho. Hey, hey, ho. Mother, I hear you in the river song. Eternal waters flowing on and on. Mother, I hear you in the river song. Eternal waters flowing on and on. Hey, 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 ho. 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 Thank you, Holly. Okay. And now let's go through our unity intentions. Please affirm with me unity's founding principle. There is only one power and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the source of all good. And now our unity of Lawrence vision statement. United in divine love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And now our Unity of Lawrence mission statement. We are a thriving spiritual community, sharing love, building bridges, and inspiring transformation. Tim Behrens is a multi-instrumental, goodness gracious, Tim Behrens is a multi-instrumental singer, songwriter, composer, and session music who enjoys authentic relating practices, digital art, and the creative process. He is excited to be sharing music as part of Unity Community. Welcome, Tim. Together, light sails our ship across seas, light straight on in stormy weather. We got all these names we build around it, called it at night, surrounded. A few wind batters testing us and leads the world to fight. We tell ourselves it's real, it's so lost in things we feel. Give credence to our fears, and all the waves are more than we can steer. So love, I fall away in no despair when it's all love. I strip away and it's there. Whistles, bells don't hold a light, the years can tell. The truth we lost, well, grasping straws, the truth born in the sun. We tell ourselves it's real, it's so lost in things we feel. Give credence to our fears, and all the waves are more than we can steer. And it's all love. I fall away, no despair.
sip and stand some stranger's smile will brush you in the longest smile and wake you from a dream that feels so wrong and everywhere you look and all the kindness you mistook and everyone in harmony is singing the same song could it be ourselves it's real get so lost in things we feel give credence to our fears and all the waves are more than we can steer when it's all love I'll fall away no despair Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Reverend Jennifer Hutchins is the founder of Unity Arts Ministry. Her mission is to inspire self-reflection and personal transformation through spiritual principles and the healing power of art. Through Unity Arts Ministry, Reverend Jen facilitates creative workshops, classes, and retreat experiences. Welcome, Reverend Jen. Thank you, John. <sighs> I'm getting waves. Hey! <laughs> I love this part where it's like you're facing one direction, then you turn around and you see everybody in the room and see all your lights shining. Thank you for being here. It's Mother's Day, and so I know you have other options, other choices, probably other plans later today. I know I do, so <laughs> thank you for being here this morning and setting this intention right here, right now, to remember divine motherhood in our lives. As John shared earlier, the idea of motherhood is not reserved for those who physically birthed a human child into being. Many of us have fur babies that we mother. Many of us have even creative projects, creators in the room. You know what it takes to birth a creative project into the world, to see it through to fruition, to watch it grow. Yes, yeah, so today we are going to experience and remember divine motherhood in ourselves, in everyone around us, and in our spiritual leaders that inspire us to remember these truths. I'm going to tell you that, that last one, that is what got me through one of the most challenging times in my life to date. I always hate to say that because then, you know, it's like, hey, universe, you know. Not that I need another one. I remember this one very clearly. But it actually was around my first Mother's Day experience as a new mother myself. See, my own mother had passed away just a few months prior to cancer. So I was still very much deep in the grief of that loss. And then my son was born about a, a week, rather, before Mother's Day. So my mother wasn't there. She wasn't there at his birth. She wasn't there for me to celebrate her on that Mother's Day. She wasn't there to celebrate the newborn that I was holding in my arms on that day. And to top it all off, my husband forgot it was Mother's Day. <laughs> Just threw him under the bus. Now, in his defense, he's dealing with a wife that's grieving the loss of her mother and a newborn child at home. So fair enough, like, you know, we've, we've forgiven. We're good, we're good. So can you imagine that? Can you imagine that heaviness? And so when I say we're going to talk about divine motherhood today, I wanna to tell you in that moment, it felt anything less than divine, right? 
it felt like a heavy weight. It felt like me sitting there holding my son and smiling and laughing and watching all that he's doing. And then like the wave of grief would hit and I'd be like in extreme tears and uncontrollable crying. I feel like this is a little loose. I do that to you. Man, we're going to switch. We're going to switch it up. John, can you help me out? I'm clipped in the back. So <laughs> this, right, is a reminder. Thank you so much. A reminder that uh, when we say yes to something, we don't always know how it's going to go, right? So in this moment, when I was experiencing my first Mother's Day, right, and recognizing all of the ups and downs. Now, in that moment, I might not have been conscious of what it was that carried me through that day and through the next year. But looking back, the truth is that it was faith that got me through. I believe that the first and strongest aspect of motherhood, whether it is, again, that birthing of a human child and raising it, whether it is nurturing somebody with that love and compassion of a mother, whether it is a creative process and project that you are bringing into being and nurturing that with compassion, these are all experiences of faith. I know I've shared this before, but the day that my son was born, that morning, I was feeling a little anxious, as you can imagine, and quite a lot without my mother on that day, remembering her quite a bit. And I turned to the Bible for inspiration. I flipped it open randomly, as I do in those moments when I'm like, I don't know exactly what I need, but I need something. So I'm going to open this book, and I'm going to pray on whatever comes forward. And so I flipped it open to the first chapter of the book of Luke. Those of you who know the Bible will remember that this is the point where the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and tells her that she's to have a son. Now, I continued and, and read on to the birth of Jesus as well. So, coincidental? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. In that moment, I felt that presence and that comfort of Divine Mother. I felt it through Mary. I felt it through the knowing of God. I felt it through my own faith. So let me recap a little bit here. The angel Gabriel comes to Mary you remember at this point, she has not yet been with her husband. And the angel says, you are going to birth a child, a child of God's. Mary's first response, hold up. How is that even possible, right? How is that even possible? This might be your response. Should somebody give you the same directives? Yeah, I'm seeing some of the men in particular go, <laughs> yeah, right? That's impossible. And the angel says, anything is possible with God. So Mary thinks about this and says, all right. If this is to be, then let it be. I am putting my faith in God. I trust in God in this. Let it be unto me as God desires. And not only does she say this, but she's, she claims this, what an honor, what a blessing it is to be called into this. Now, that is a beautiful act of faith. And so when I read this, the day that I was to deliver my son, I centered into that, right? Centered into that truth that no matter what happens, and I don't know what's going to happen, right? Very much in that space of the unknown, not just at that day, but like the life to come and what all that would bring, right? There's so much unknown, and yet, 
to be reminded that God would be with me the whole time and that what an honor, what a blessing it is to say yes to this calling. The figure of Mary has for many become a symbol of the Divine Mother, not just the Divine Mother of Jesus and all the stories that unfold, but she also was a nurturing, compassionate, unconditionally loving spirit. We see this in not only how she shows up throughout the biblical narratives in support of her son. Can you imagine being in her shoes, watching his ministry, watching that experience, and yet time and again moving into that faith? He knows what he's doing. God knows what God is doing through this ministry as well. And being able to have that love, that unconditional love to let him do his life, to let him live it, to watch whatever unfolds, how hard, how challenging, and yet how divine mother. Mary has become a symbol in Christianity as well. Many turn to her as Mother Mary. And you see the statues of Mary, compassionate. Sometimes there's birds or rabbits nearby as well as the infant child. And we see her again as this nurturing figure. Now, in my own life, I did not have a very strong connection to Mary until that day. And I feel like she has been with me as a reminder of that nurturing, loving, compassionate energy, that faith, that faith that is required of all mothers. Now, for some of us, we can, we can turn to scripture, we can see this, and we can feel that sense of peace. And other times, other moments in our lives, we may just need like a very physical, tangible reminder of divine love. And this is where we can turn to our family, whether it is our biological birth family, our birth mother, or someone else in our lives who has played that mothering role. Think of the people in your life who have shown up no matter what you have done and supported you. Think of the people who would say, you can crash on my couch if it ever comes to that. You ever need a place to stay, you can stay here. The people who show up with soup when you're not feeling well. The people who call you to check in when they know you're having a hard time. I once had a friend show up to clean a cat mess that had been smeared all over my living room by my Roomba. Oh, no. You laugh, that's a friend. <laughs> yeah. Wait, say that again? Do you know what Roomba is? Yeah, it's, I know it's, all right, so my cat had a mess, made an accident outside of the litter box, and my Roomba drove over it. Yeah, he gets it now. <laughs> yeah, and she came over with all the supplies I needed and helped me scrub up that mess. That is divine motherhood expressed through someone else. Right? So when, when we are centered, when we are in that place where we can say, you know what, I need some spiritual inspiration, we flip open a book and we get it, that's great. But sometimes we need that person that's going to show up for us. We need the person we can call on the phone and express what's on our hearts and that we know that they will listen without judgment. Or if they do, they reserve it at least, right? <laughs> they reserve it till we're in a place that we can hear and process that with them another time. The Divine Mother shows up not just in women, but in all genders. That Divine Mother is that consciousness within us that is our ability to tap in to divine love, that unconditional love. The Divine Mother is that energy of intuition, of creativity, of patience, 
moms, patience. These qualities are expressed not just in others, every single one of the people in this room, everyone watching online, these divine mother qualities are available in you. And they come out and they are expressed, again, not just mother to child, but they are available to us no matter what. In every situation, that is a creative experience, right? Creativity is birthing something into being, nurturing, having that level of compassion to see it forward, watch it grow, no matter what. It's that level of faith, of knowing that you will know how to support them as well. Myrtle Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, is often described as being the mother of Unity. I love that phrase, and, and many often refer to her as Mother Myrtle, even those who were not her sons. Yes? Myrtle, much like Mary, had a calling, a divine call. She was sitting in a room in a spiritual seminar and something struck. Some words that were said struck not just her mind, but into her heart, into her whole being, to the point where she then birthed something new in her, her own life, her own being. I am a child of God and therefore I do not inherit sickness. These were the thoughts, the words that birthed the unity movement. And she then nurtured it and nurtured everyone who was a part of it. Watched it grow, had the faith to see it through. Within each one of you, you may remember a time in your life that was a call, a distinctive, I shall do this, whatever it is. I shall birth a child. I shall create something new that has not been created before. And you have said yes to that call, or perhaps you're still going, hmm, maybe. You're, you're preparing, right? You're, you're in the, the Mary stage where Mary says, hmm, how's that even possible, right? Waiting for Gabriel to tell you anything is possible with God. And to know that at the core of your being, in every bone of your body, to know anything is possible before you say, okay, sure, yeah, I'll commit to it, <laughs> right? We have all had these experiences. Now, a friend of mine has a shirt. I love the shirt. It says, Mommin ain't easy. It's not. It's not always easy. So whether you have already said yes to that call or you're in that, mm, stage, I want you to know right now, there are going to be phases of it that are not easy. And those are the times in your life where you can call on the Divine Mother. Sometimes we remember it in ourselves. Sometimes we remember it through turning for spiritual inspiration, remembering Divine Mother. Again, if you have that connection to Mary, what a beautiful reminder of Divine Mother. Sometimes we need to reach out to others in our lives and feel that energy of the Divine Mother. Again, whether it is through your, your own relationship with your mother or someone else, right? Remember all those people in your life that exemplify compassion, unconditional love, patience. Today is a day that we celebrate mothers. And I invite you today to remember to celebrate not just one person, not just your birth mother, but to celebrate all those in your life, the spiritual leaders, the grandmothers, the fathers, the teachers, the friends, your spiritual community, all of those who show up with that divine mother energy to remember that. So that the next time you come across that moment in your life where you're like, oh yeah, mom and ain't easy, right? Whether again, it's with your own child or with a creative project, whether it's with your fur babies and Roomba messes, whatever it might be, when you hit that mom and ain't easy moment, know that you are not alone. Divine love is always there to guide you. 
It is God in expression through all of these different forms and through you. So today, as we bless our children, I wish to bless the Divine Mother in you. You may wish to hold your hands out to receive this, if that feels comfortable for you. The Divine Mother in me blesses you. I behold the truth of your being. I behold the light that you are. I behold within you unconditional divine love. And so it is. And as you greet one another today, may you greet one another with the energy and the love of the Divine Mother. And so it is. just wanted to give context for this song. I, I, I spent the week looking for things that would honor divine motherhood and um, found all of these beautiful songs and none of them were ones that I was capable of singing. And so I went back, I, and why I want to give context is this isn't necessarily a Mother's Day song, but I went back 40 years and um, remember riding in the back of a car somewhere and my mother would always ask us to sing the song, me and my sister. And so kind of doing this is uh, um, just to honor her and that feeling of being comforted and um, supported.
Now's the time in our service to prepare for meditation. I invite you to take this energy. Perhaps you are feeling the energy of the divine child within right now. To feel this energy, feel it in your body, allow yourself to be fully present to whatever is arising within you. As we take the time to lean in to love, to gratitude, to memory, as we bring into our hearts everyone that has touched us with the divine mother energy, we allow them to come into our thoughts. And for each one, we offer our deepest gratitude. We offer forgiveness. We offer divine love. Allowing ourselves to be filled with this energy of divine love. We allow ourselves to drop into our heart center to move into the core of our being, to presence the spirit, the truth of divine love within. And we allow ourselves to rest in this truth as we move into the quiet of the soul and rest in a moment of silence. I am surrounded by divine love. I breathe divine love. I am an expression of divine love in action. We allow this truth to bring us back into this moment with a deep inhale and exhale, we bring ourselves, our bodies, our minds right here, right now, as you gently open your eyes and behold with the vision of divine love. Remember a calling to see all I could 
could see I remember I was falling My arms were wide, no, I could fly Could be anything I want to be Could I still draw a rainbow Where clouds are scribbled gray Soft shower song on steel roof Can carry me away I remember a child Tossed wild and free I remember A child It was me Trace the lines Across the page Did I lose track of him With age And so small Had everything they need Days filled magic Had no to blink They disappeared shorter while well, I was sleeping seems the years flew by and I remember believing that I was destined free I remember I was dancing across rivers wide with open eyes when love was all I need could I still draw a rainbow where clouds are scribbled gray soft shower song on steel roof can carry me away I remember a child hair tossed wild and free I remember a child and it was me Thank you. Goodness, thank you. As our ushers come forward for a time of thanks, I invite you to join me as we hold our gifts to this community in our hands and love in our hearts. Let's affirm together Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. As the love offering is collected, let's sing, I am one with the heart of the mother. Let me remember, let me remember, let me remember. 
As our ushers come forward, here's our prayer of thanks. Please listen. We are grateful and we bless the flow of good that supports our unity community. We bless the givers who give their time, talent, and treasure. We stand in the knowing that the flow of good goes forth only to return again and again. And so it is. Amen. A special welcome to our guests today. Thank you for joining us. If you would like more information about the Unity Movement and Unity of Lawrence, you may pick up a welcome packet in the foyer. Our second Sunday potluck is today. Join us downstairs for this time of fellowship and food. All are welcome. Lessons in survival will not meet today. The next class will be Sunday, May 21st at 4 p.m and Francesca is bringing cannolis. What is cannoli? Cannoli is a dessert. The book study, Be Becoming Supernatural, continues Monday, May 22nd at 6 p.m. Unity Talks is this Friday, May 19th at 6.30 p.m. Brooke Elaine is an integral, integral wellness and end of life coach. She will present the best three months vision plan during her talk. More information in the foyer. Uh, now I'd like to have Phil give a quick announcement. Hi, everybody. Uh, just wanted a, a real quick announcement. We, we are having a retreat this sun, uh, Saturday coming and uh, out in Overbrook. And it's going to be basically uh, sort of learning how to use our spiritual power to create the reality we really want. And it's, it's, a, it's a lovely time out at, uh, at Cheryl's uh, place. So anyhow, what I really want to say is in the foyer, there are some documents, some papers that have all the instructions, how to get there, and all the details. So uh, that's really all I wanted to say. Thanks. Oh, we, we still have room. Oh, and it's, this is not a dispense, uh, supernatural event. There's some overlap, but this is for anybody that's interested in, in you know, going a little deeper into their being. <laughs> Phil, thank you, Phil. Mark your calendars for Friday, June 2nd. Matt Venuti is bringing us his electroacoustic sound immersion concert. Check out the poster in the foyer. This is geared towards adults. And now Chris would like to make a quick announcement. That is a fantastic idea. Let's rub our hands together. Chris, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the divinity in you. Very nice. Please join us next Sunday when Kelly Hunt brings us special music and the message, Let It Rain. Now it's time to rise as you're able and sing the peace song. Real quick, Vortex is meeting at Centennial Park, unless it rains. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 